On Wednesday the 8th of March, against a backdrop of considerable uncertainty, the Chancellor Philip Hammond will deliver his first and last spring budget. In a move previously announced which will see only one fiscal event each year, it is widely predicted that the Chancellor will leave any significant changes until his first autumn budget. So what is Wednesday likely to bring and what is the potential impact to the Northern Ireland economy in particular? Well, the Chancellor has been given a boost ahead of Wednesday's statements, with many economists revising their short-term forecasts. The Bank of England have increased their forecast in, for the UK from 0.8% in August to a growth forecast of 2% last month. Much of this additional growth has been attributed to the spending and further investment that the Chancellor announced in infrastructure projects within his autumn statement. Northern Ireland has also performed robustly over this period and has equally outperformed some of those initial forecasts. However, the growth forecast in 2017 within Northern Ireland still only represents less than half that of the UK total. Much work has gone into seeking to address this productivity gap between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. And in particular, real effort has been put into devolving the rate of corporation tax to the Northern Ireland Executive. Today, legislation exists for Northern Ireland to have its own rate of corporation tax. However, that power still remains subject to the Executive being able to support and demonstrate a sustainable budget to the Treasury. In the current state of affairs with no power sharing executive in place, the focus must now turn to the two largest elected parties to put aside their differences, form the executive and submit an urgent sustainable budget to Treasury so that the commencement date for corporation tax in Northern Ireland is not deferred any further beyond the potential of a 1st of April 2018 date. Overall, Wednesday's budget is likely to be a low-key affair, with the focus being on stability for individuals and businesses and seeking to enhance the UK's um, competitiveness in a post-Brexit era. There are three key elements to that as far as we can see, and we believe that additional funding is required for schools, colleges and universities, particularly on those STEM subjects, building greater links between the schools and colleges and universities and the businesses that will ultimately employ them. This will also improve the UK's productivity when compared to many of its international competitors. The second element is seeking to address the complexity that exists within the UK tax legislation. Currently, legislation comprises over 20,000 pages and is one of the most complex in the world. Individuals and businesses are simply looking at clarity and predictability over their tax affairs. And in the era of post-Brexit, where there is enough uncertainty of its own, now is the time more than ever for the government to provide additional resource and power to the Office of Tax Simplification in seeking to address this complexity. The final element is seeking to enhance and improve upon the UK's competitiveness in the field of R&D. Measures in this area could um, provide for enhanced um, or improved tax credit relief for qualifying projects and equally to perhaps um, broaden the definition of what qualifies for R&D so that work over the life cycle of the project can qualify rather than simply just the initial first couple of phases.